evening New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. We are so glad that you have joined us once again on this Wednesday night. Psalm 17, 6 through 8 in the New Living Translation says, I am praying to you because I know you will answer, O God. Bend down and listen as I pray. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. By your mighty power, you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies. Guard me as you would guard your own eyes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. We are praying for God's protection on tonight. We're praying for his healing. And we're praying uh, as we endure everything on this earth that's going on, we're praying that God would just give us the strength to continue on. Help us sing, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. If you have some questions in the corner of your mind, traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, reflections of your past seems to face you every day. But this one thing I do know, Jesus is the way. Oh, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. If you're looking for love, Jesus is the way. If you're looking for peace, Jesus is the way. If you're looking for joy, Jesus is the way. Oh, come, come, Jesus is the way. Oh, come, come, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Amen, amen. Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. There's no doubt about it. The, the Christ we serve, Jesus the Christ, he is, he is the way. Why don't we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We thank God for just another privilege to come before him and worship him again today. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come now, Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us with this medium of communication. We thank you for blessing us again, Father God, to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us with your word. We realize that your word, Father God, makes us whole. Your word speaks to us and makes us who we are. We ask you to bless us as we study your word today, Father God that your word will be real to us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Let me thank everybody who's joining us um, here by live broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Sheremy Road, Houston, Texas. Thank you for putting your church clothes out tonight so you can come on to church. Amen. Thank you for being a part. Somebody put the put their gown out today so they can make it to church and somebody put their ties out and their head rags out today. So thank you so much for coming. 
to be a part of this service. Tonight we are looking at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Uh, we left last time at verse number uh, 18. So tonight we'll be at verses number 19 through verse 24. Verses 19 through 24 is where we are on tonight. Amen. We are here again, and we're looking at this letter to the Philippians church written by the Apostle Paul. So we're here again tonight looking at what Paul has to say to the church at Philippi. When you found Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 24, you'll discover these words in the first verse, verse 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. He is saying to, him, to, to the church at Philippi that he's looking forward to hearing good news from them. Paul, again, is continuing to write this love letter to the church of Philippi, this letter to remind them that he is concerned about them. Now, Paul's in a Roman jail, but he still is concerned about other people. Paul is writing to let those who he have trained in the ministry, those who he has been with in ministry and walk in, walked in with in ministry, to remind them that his mind is always on them. He is saying, Paul is saying, that I am concerned about you, and I'm concerned about you to the point where I want to hear some good, encouraging news from you. Paul saying, I can't come, but I trust God in Jesus Christ that I'll be able to send Timothy soon. He's saying to us today that even when we can't make it, there ought to be somebody that we can call on to make it. Here, the Pastor Paul, here, the Apostle Paul, he's saying that I'm looking forward to coming to see you. And even though I can't make it right now, I'm going to send uh, Timothy to you. And I'm going to send him to you soon. He says, first of all, he trusts God. We all know that we cannot put faith in ourselves. We cannot just get up and do whatever we want to do. Even today, we can't even get up and walk out of our houses like we usually do. We're saying that we're trusting God. As Paul has put his trust in God, he's saying to us that we have to put our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, we got to put our faith in, in Christ because he is the only one, he is the only one who can make promises and keep those promises. See, many of us make promises and we really, really, really have in mind of keeping the promise. Paul says, my trust is in Jesus Christ. If we're going to live in the right spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to put our faith in him. Paul says, I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he closes out the other pericope prior to this one by saying to them that I am being poured out as a drink offering. And even though I'm being poured out like a drink offering, I'm also glad. And you ought to be glad and rejoice with me also. Paul is saying that I'm willing to make a sacrifice for Jesus Christ. And now he comes to verse number 19 in Philippians chapter 2 and says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to send Timothy to you shortly. You need to look at the fact that Timothy was his son in the ministry. Timothy was his co-laborer in the gospel ministry of Jesus Christ. Paul is saying, I can depend on Timothy. He's saying, if I can't get there, I'll be able to send a representative there. The question tonight is, can your pastor send you when he can't make it? I know everybody wants their pastor to be there. I, want, I know everybody wants their pastor to be a part of, of their going through uh, when they have death in their family, when they have a sickness. I know that everybody wants to see their pastor by their side. Paul is saying, I can't make it. <laughs> He's locked up in a dungeon. He's locked up in a jail. He can't make it. He's in prison. He can't make it. 
But he's saying that they look forward to sending Timothy to you. The question is, can your God depend on you? Or will you give your God all kinds of excuses? Can Jesus Christ depend on you to go and see to those who need to be tend to? Paul says that I can depend, and we'll see in later verses, Paul says I can depend on Timothy because you know who he is and you know his character. Right. Paul says, Paul says, I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm putting my faith in him that I'll be able to send a representative, and this particular representative is Timothy. Can Jesus trust you? Will you give Jesus excuses? Can your pastor trust you? Or will you give your pastor excuses? Can your fellow co-laborer in the gospel ministry trust you? Or will you give your co-laborer in the gospel ministry excuses? He says, I trust the Lord Jesus Christ that Timothy will be sent to you. I'll be able to send Timothy to you shortly. That I also may be encouraged when I know your state. Paul is always concerned about this church. He is always concerned about the members of this church. Every pastor ought to be concerned about the membership. <laughs> Every pastor ought to be concerned about the well-doing of the membership. During this COVID-19 situation, we ought to find ourselves concerned about each other. I just want to say to those who are members and visitors of the New Beginning Church, those who are contributors to the New Beginning Church, Pastor Matthew Alexander Davis is concerned about you. I'm concerned that you're healthy. I'm concerned that you're in a good state of mind. I am concerned that you are walking with Jesus. I am so concerned that I hope you're not taking a vacation because we're not at church. When I say a vacation, I mean I hope you're not taking a vacation away from the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you're not using this time to, to just play games in your life. I hope you're not using this time to avoid studying for your Sunday school lesson. I hope you're not using this time to, to get away from your quiet time with the Lord. And I hope you're not using this time to be stressed out over the things that are going on in the world in which we live. I want to say to you, I'm concerned about you. Paul says he's going to send Timothy because he want to hear words of encouragement about how well off you're doing. He want to be encouraged. Paul said that he would be very encouraged if he finds out that you are doing well. On today, on, on tomorrow, on yesterday, my concern is that every member of the New Beginning Church, every visitor to the New Beginning Church, every person that's associated to the New Beginning Church, I am concerned about your state. Amen. Every pastor ought to be concerned about your state. Verse number 20, he says, for I have no one minded, no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. Now he says, now look, I, I got Timothy. I want to send Timothy. But there are some other sons in the ministry I have. I can't send them. <laughs> he said, I have several sons in the ministry. I have several disciples that I have taught the way of Jesus Christ. But I don't have any of them who are like-minded like Timothy and like I am. That's right. And because they are not like-minded, I'm not going to send them. I'm going to send Timothy. Amen. Look at what he says in verse number 20. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. What he's saying is I got some folk who will fake it. I got some people who will start off running the race well, and when things get tough, they'll bag out. I have some people who will always use excuses, but I have no one 
who is like-minded as Timothy is and as I am, that we are so concerned about your state, about your circumstances, about your condition, about your life. Verse 21, he says, For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. Saying, I want to send Timothy to you. Because Timothy is serious about ministry. But the rest of them, they seek their own little agendas. They seek their own cause. That's the group. That's the group. That's the group right there that they get upset when you don't sing their song. That's the group that get upset if the pastor preaches against sin. That's the group that gets upset if you don't put me up to preach when I think I'm ready. Or put me up to teach when I think I'm ready. This is the very group that Paul is talking about. Paul is saying to us today, number one, they're not like-minded. Number two, they don't sincerely care about other people. Number three, they seek their own. We've already told you in previous verses that God wants us to always consider others more than we consider ourselves. God wants you to be concerned about other people. God wants you to be concerned. You know, people are dying all around us, and because they're not a part of our family, this is, this is another death. People are becoming just a number. When you really love the Lord, when you really are co-laboring with the pastor, co-laboring in ministry, you are concerned about individuals you don't even know. If, if we're concerned, Houston, Houston has lost 12 lives and, and, and this last few weeks to COVID-19. And if, if we become desensitized to the lives of other people, we won't care. We just say, oh, well, that's nothing compared to New York. And there's nothing compared to New Orleans. There's nothing compared to California. But the fact of the matter is, every single person is important to God. Every soul is important to God. And because every soul is important to God, we ought to be concerned about what God is concerned about. Amen. Songwriter says it like this, Lord, break my heart for those things that break your heart. Lord, break my heart. Break my heart. Cause me to be heartbroken over the same things that you are heartbroken over, God. He says, for I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things that are of Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. He says to us that we ought to always seek the things of Christ Jesus. We ought to always seek to please God. We ought to always be concerned about those things that, that God is concerned about. Amen. When you seek your own, then God can't bless you. When you, you're more concerned and tied up with the things of your own accord, your, your own interest, then God has to reject or hold back his blessings for you. But when you're concerned about others, when you live for others, when you do things for others, when you, when you act out for others, then, then, then God can bless you. Amen. There's a problem. There's a problem when a person is only concerned about his house, his household, his or her family, and they're never concerned about anything else. It's that same person that's always concerned about themselves, and they are not concerned about the house of God. You can tell people who are selfish. Selfish people will never pour themselves into other people. Selfish people will not get out of their comfort zone for other people. Selfish people will always look at those things that are concerning to them and them alone. Paul says to this church at, 
at Philippi that I want to send Timothy to you because I don't have anybody like-minded. They will not look out for your state and your well-being. They are not concerned about anything other than those things of their own, and they are not concerned about the ministry of Jesus Christ. Verse number 22, Philippians chapter 2, verse number 22. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Just as a son served alongside his father, Timothy has come along beside me and served. He says to this church, you already know his character. You know his character so well until he has a proven character. And because he has proven himself, you need to understand I'm going to send him to you because you know his outlook on life. Mm -hmm. You know what Timothy stands for. You know what Timothy will do and will not do. The question today is, can your, parent, can your pastor... <laughs> can your pastor speak for your character? Mm -hmm. And if he does speak honestly about your character, would it be good? I oftentimes tell people that you, you really don't realize it, but if you tell me what a member of the New Virginia Church did, I can tell you who the member is. If you tell me what a member of the New Beginning Church said, I can tell you who said it because every member has a proven character, whether the character is good or bad. Amen. I can tell you how they would treat people. I can tell you how they will come after visitors. I can tell you if they would be evangelistic in nature. Every single person of the New Beginning Church, I can tell you their character. We ought to have a proven character unto the Lord. Our character, our character ought to be proven that we will stand for the Lord even in the toughest times. You, you look out for your neighbor in these tough times. Your character ought to be good. And not only that, you ought to look out for the things of God even in these tough circumstances. He says that, that you know him, you, you, you know his proven character. His character has shown before you before. You, you know his character. In other words, if, if Peter was to be said to have done something, if it was said that Peter had done something, you ought to be able to say, no, that's not Peter. Peter wouldn't do that. Timothy wouldn't do that. Ralph wouldn't do that. If, if, if somebody say, Timothy did this, it ought to be good because his character has been proven. If, if Bill does something, if Sally does something, your character ought to be good and it ought to be consistent. The problem with some people, they'll have good character for a minute and they shut it down the next minute. I ought to be the same person when it comes to godly things as I was a year ago, but I would have grown, I should have grown stronger in character. Paul says that, that you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Timothy was faithful to God, therefore he was faithful to the gospel ministry, which led him to be faithful to the church and faithful to the pastor. Amen. Let me just share with you. People who are faithful to the Lord has no problem with being faithful to the ministry, faithful to the church, and faithful to their pastor. Yes, That's why you have to choose a pastor that you can follow. When you're not faithful to the pastor, not faithful to the church, the, not faithful to the Lord, the question is, have you made the right choices in your life? Say to a person the other day, my pastor doesn't do this, and my pastor's not like this. And I'm looking at them, you know, I can't say very much. I'm looking at them saying, well, why are you there? Or how long are you going to be there? Your pastor ought to be concerned about you. And not only that, your character ought to be as such that you're going to do whatever it takes for the ministry of Jesus Christ. 
We have too many people who are in church, but they're not concerned about the ministry of Jesus Christ. Paul says that Timothy has walked with him. Timothy has served faithfully with him in the gospel ministry of Jesus Christ. Can your pastor say that about you? Are you serving faithfully? Are you serving when it's uncomfortable to you? Are you going and doing when you're not sure about it? Or does it all have to be spelled out to the letter and to the T? Or will you walk with God and trust God to lead you in the midst of walking with him? God has a way of leading us. He, God will lead us into all righteousness if we trust him. You know, it's a devastating thing when I hear people talk bad about their church, bad about their pastor, bad about their God, bad about their Christ. My question to you is, where is your character? Said to a young lady the other day, don't leave your church. Get in there and make it better. No church is any stronger than the weakest link. Don't you be the weakest link. Don't you be the one that always pull things down and pull people down. You be the one, as Paul says, be encouraging. Be encouraging to others. Verse 23, Philippians chapter 2, verse 23. Therefore, I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with me. You know Paul got some issues going on, don't you? <laughs> Paul got some things going on. Lady asked me just today, why you didn't call me back? Why you didn't get back with me? Because I got issues going on just like you got issues going on. We all have something going on within us and without us and around us. We have issues going on. Paul says that I'm going to send Timothy at once. And when I send him at once, I want to make sure that things are going well with me also. The problem, the problem here is many times we think leaders, whether they are pastors, whether they are a school principals, whether they are teachers, whether they are prayer warriors, sometimes we believe that those people don't need support and do not need encouraging. Let me just be the first to tell you that regardless of how saved, regardless of how on fire your pastor is, regardless of how on fire your leader is, regardless of how on fire your servant leader is, Everybody needs encouraging, and everybody needs prayer. Amen. You ought to be praying for your leader. Somebody come to you uh, uh, talking about your leader, you ought to say, wait a minute, baby, let's pray for him right now. Let's pray for her right now. Let's pray for them right now. And if you pray every time somebody bring you mess, they'll stop bringing you mess. Because yes, they know you're going to bow down in prayer. Because in prayer, people are convicted. It says, therefore, I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how things go as it goes with me. As soon as I see how things go with me. As soon as I see how it goes with me. You know, preachers need prayer. <laughs> we live in a condition right now. We're living in condition, and it just didn't happen. Just didn't happen the last two months. Preachers need prayer just like you need prayer. Amen. Leaders need prayer just like you need prayer. The president needs prayer just like even greater than you need prayer. Matter of fact, your pastor needs prayer even greater than you do. Because you never know the weight. You never know what's going on. You never know who just brought him a different kind of news the last few minutes. Finally, in verse number 24, he says, But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. This is the same theme that Paul has maintained all the way from verse number 1, chapter 1, all the way up to verse number 24, chapter 2. He has maintained this same aspiration. He has maintained this same hope. He says, I know 
Nero's chopping block is waiting to chop my head off. But I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm talking to the Lord about it, that I'm going to come see you. Paul says that even though I know I'm locked up in this Roman jail, and I know I'm locked up because of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I am looking forward to the day that I come see you. But he says to us tonight that regardless of how dark and how bleak it looks, we need to make sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we keep hope alive. Amen. That we keep hope in Jesus Christ. Regardless of what goes on around you, regardless of how dark it may get, you know that God is still shining a bright light. No, we're not looking for the silver lining. We're not looking for the light at the end of the tunnel because we know that God is walking with us right now. We got to trust that he's walking with us right now. We got to trust that God is walking with us even in these perilous times. God is right here. Paul says, finally, in verse number 24, he says, but I trust the Lord. He started off in verse number 19 saying, I trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. He ends in verse number 24 by saying, I trust the Lord. If we're going to get through it, we got to put our faith in God. If we're going to get through it, we got to have, we got to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Buddha can't help us now. Muhammad can't help us now. Confucius can't help us now. Because when you look at those men graves, their bones are still rotting in the grave. But when you go to the tomb of Jesus, he's not there. He, he has risen from the dead. Jesus, the one that died on Calvary. Jesus, the one they buried in a barber tomb. Jesus, the one that got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Early that third day morning, he got up with all power. We got to put our trust in him. If he can get up from the dead, he can handle our little situation. He can take care of our little circumstances. Mm -hmm. If we just trust in Jesus, as we walk with him, as we trust in him, we need to understand we have faith and we leave it to God to let it come to pass. The problem I have with people who don't walk in faith. Whenever, whenever the pastor puts something on the table, some vision, there's always somebody say, well, what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't work that way? What if it doesn't go well? Well, what if it does go well? What if it does take place? What if it does happen? We have to walk in faith. And as we walk in faith, we understand that God is yet in control. God is yet on the throne. God is still making, making choices that's going to benefit us. Regardless of how bleak it may look now, Romans 8 and 28 declares that all things will work together for the good. For those who love the Lord, those of us who are called according to his purpose, everything will work together for the good. We just got to hang in there. Yes. We just got to wait on the Lord. We, have to, we just have to stay with him. And as we stay with him, God is able to bless us. As I close this little pericope tonight, I want to remind you, Paul says we must trust in the Lord. Not only does, does he says we must trust in the Lord, we ought to have somebody we can call on that trusts God with us. Somebody that we can send when we can't make it. Paul says, I, I got my faith on Timothy. I got, I got my trust in Timothy. He says, I trust God. Another point he makes here is that I trust God before I trust any man. See, you put your trust in him. You put the, your trust in her. You put your trust in them. Paul says, before anything, I trust in God. And then he says, you, you know the character of Timothy. I'm, I'm going to send Timothy to you while I'm locked up. I'm going to send Timothy to you while, while I'm going through. My question is, can your pastor, can your God depend on you? Can your God depend on you? He says, and now, I got several guys that I could send, but they don't have the same mind as Timothy. And as I do, they are looking out for their own. They don't look out for the things of Jesus Christ. He says, but Timothy has a proven track record. He has a proven character. 
So I'm going to send Timothy. And as I send Timothy, I'm concerned about you. I am going to look forward to Timothy coming, bringing me some good news, some encouraging news about how well off you're doing, your state, your state of mind, your state in Christ Jesus, your state of walking in the gospel. I am looking forward to the day that God can bless me to hear that you are doing well. Finally, he says, but I'm looking forward to coming myself. And he closes this pericope out in verse number 24 of Philippians chapter 2. He closes the pericope out by saying that I still trust God. Amen. I trust God that I myself will one day come and be a part of the fellowship. Let me tell you, you got to keep hope alive. You got to keep hope living. You got you to keep trusting God that God can do some things that no man can do. Yes, some writer says it like this. My God is able. My God, he can do with no other power. Then he stops and he says, Holy Ghost power. No other power on earth can do. We got to walk by faith. We got to live by faith. We got to act in faith. And we need to make sure that we understand by faith that God is the one who makes us who we are. God is the one who keeps us in our mind. Because if God doesn't keep your mind, your mind won't get kept. Doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It doesn't matter how much education you have. You need God to keep your mind. Because if God doesn't keep your mind, you won't get kept. There may be somebody listening to me today that have never trusted Jesus as your Savior. This is your moment. Yes. This is your opportunity to believe this little story that Jesus died for our sins that he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. You know, it's Easter. The Resurrection Sunday is not about eggs. It's not about bunnies. It's not about colors. It's not about candy. It's about Jesus the Christ who died, who was buried and rose again. And if you believe this story, that Jesus has died, Jesus buried, and Jesus rose, you can be saved right here, right now. You don't need an organ. You don't need a piano. You don't need a drum. You don't need singing. You can be saved. But what you do need is to repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. And let me tell you, that's what this weekend, this, this Sunday morning is all about. That's what Good Friday is all about. It's all about the fact that Jesus died and rose again. And if you can believe that story, you can be saved right here, right now. Just bow your head with me right now. Bow your heads with me and repeat after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. Lord, thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. We believe according to Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 that if you believe the story and you prayed this prayer and invited Jesus into your life, you're saved, you're born again, and you're on your way to heaven. I say to you, get involved in a good Bible teaching church, a fundamental Bible teaching church, so you can grow in the Spirit of God. We thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251, Share My Road, Houston, Texas. If you're ever in the Houston area, come by and visit with us. We'll be glad to have you. You'll be glad that you've come. Now it's time for us to give unto the Lord. It is offering time. It is it's time to give to the Lord. It is offering time. And if you want to give to the Lord, you can do so by joining us in our cash app, or you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Please, ma'am, please, sir, help to support this ministry, the ministry of the New Beginning Church. You can do so by cash out. 
Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. And our P.O. box that you can mail a check to is P.O. Box 503. 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 Thank you so much for being a part of our service Thank you for your support And thank you for listening in God bless you and God keep you Is our prayer Father God we thank you now We bless your name We thank you for blessing us and keeping us We ask you Father God to bless our listeners in these circumstances heal this land as only you can bless us lord that we will always unite the church strengthen families support schools and empower neighborhoods that we will be reaching souls by lifting jesus for jesus says if i be lifted up i will draw all men unto me lord we thank you now God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Thank you so much for joining us.